Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you a episode review from the classic original Goosebumps TV show. And from season two, we're going to be discussing the Headless Ghost, as you can see on the cover here. I'm a bit awestruck by how different this episode is from the actual source material of the book. This is an episode where I would actually go out of my way to declare it one of those episodes that offer a completely different version of the source material. Very reminiscent to books like The Haunted Mask 2 and the episode Haunted Mask 2. There's so many striking differences in like that episode and book, for example, that I would consider it almost like comparing two different stories. And this one feels more congruent than those, but also feels so different where I would actually say that the Headless Ghost episode is like its own version of the story. With that being said, I'm more baffled by the decisions made here than I am with the book. And I was, if you watch my book review, I was pretty baffled with those changes. But wow. <laughs> like, wow. And that's not to even mention some poor acting from a certain character. Poor effects this episode has. A weird premise that creates its own plethora of issues that make no sense when you think about it. This is a head-scratching one, I would say. Um, this episode is directed by Brian Hebb. And I'm not sure how many other episodes he did for the show. I can't remember any other ones he did off the top of my head. But, yeah, I think he did a pretty okay job with the casting. Uh, I think the teleplay was done by uh, Dan Angel and Billy Brown, which, I mean no offense to Dan Angel and Billy Brown on this, but this one was a big mess <laughs> on the writing. But... Yeah, this one, this episode tried to improve a lot of contextual issues the book had. And in a lot of regards, it actually succeeded in doing so. But it also created other things and has its other issues outside of the writing also going against it as well. And yeah, this is a pretty... I don't know. It has me on one side, I want to love it. And on one side, I want to hate it. <laughs> Because it just makes no sense in parts of the story. Some of the acting is bad. Some of the effects are bad. But it is a low budget show. I can only be too harsh on it. I try not to be as harsh on it when I can. But some of this stuff I just can't overlook. So yeah, I like this episode. I think it's a good episode. If you haven't watched it, you need to try it out. But it isn't great. It isn't one of the best. And uh, it's good, but we'll get into that. So yeah. Let's get into the plot overview without like giving too much away. So unlike the book, the episode starts off with a backstory type of thing. It go, it's back in time, and this kid named Andrew is living in this house known as the Hill House. And Andrew is in his room trying to conjure up a spirit that he thinks haunts his house. And he's interrupted by his mom, who tells Andrew to stop trying to conjure ghosts in the house. Ghosts don't exist. And Andrew is like, okay... I wasn't doing that, I'm just going to go to bed. And his mom's like, okay, you know, I believe you, not really, whatever. <laughs> and uh, so this kid, Andrew, after his mom leaves, still tries to summon the ghost. And unbeknownst to him, there's actually a ghost in his room. And the ghost manifests himself. And then we see on screen a little shadow effect of this ghost manifesting from this poor effect, mind you. And <laughs> the shadow reaches its long, lanky hands around Andrew's head. And before we get to find out what happened to Andrew, it cuts to present day. And we see this bigger guy with, you know, some cool-looking facial hair, if I must say. And uh, his name is Otto. And Otto essentially reveals that Andrew had his head popped off by the ghost. And Dwayne, over in the corner, our main character, is, you know, smiling and scoffing at all the people being scared by the legend. Dwayne's heard this story many times. He comes to Hill House a lot. But we'll soon find out why he comes to Hill House. So as this little girl is crying or, like, being scared, she gets her ankle wrapped around by this hand coming from underneath the bed. Which offers a jump scare. And Otto sees what's happening and goes and tries to stop once under the bed, and it's this girl named Stephanie wearing a fake, you know, werewolf arm looking thing. 
and the girl is scared and Stephanie laughs at the little girl very mean in this in this version of the story Stephanie I want to say off the bat Stephanie and Dwayne might be a spoiler but in the book they have this lesson they learn and, and in the episode that doesn't happen so knowing that Stephanie is pretty much a terrible character <laughs> she's just awful and uh Stephanie likes to scare people in the Hill House specifically. Same with Dwayne. They're both part of the Twin Terrors. And it's basically revealed that they both are in on the scheme. And Otto kicks them both out and says, Hey, you two need to learn to respect the Hill House. The spirits don't like it when you don't respect it. And Stephanie laughs it off and says, Hey, we got them. And then Dwayne kind of scolds her for going too far with that little girl and Stephanie's like come on it's fun to scare people that's what we do here at Hill House and Dwayne's like I think we should grow up some more I think we need to stop doing this as much and Stephanie's like what you don't like it are you chicken you know Stephanie's that type of character a very mean spirited girl she likes doing this and for some reason in the episode they don't really highlight the the point that was made in the book of why Stephanie and Dwayne do what they do. It's because they were bored. There's nothing to do there. So that's why they do it. So in the episode, they don't even try to explain that. So since it doesn't explain that, you can only infer that Stephanie's just an awful human. And so as the two are talking, there's this boy kind of watching them through the bushes. And he's very ghost pale and very mysterious, very creepy. And we don't know what's coming of him yet. So Stephanie and Dwayne make a deal to come back the next night and try to scare some more people. Dwayne reluctantly agrees, even though he doesn't really want to be doing this stuff anymore. I guess to him, it's better than doing nothing. So the next day, next night arises, they come to the house again. This time there's a new group and Otto reluctantly lets them in since they're behaving. And they, the two have decided to kind of, sneak off from the group this time around they want to go hunting for the head because since Otto's mad at him what way to make him more mad than to kind of push his buttons and kind of sneak off and go look for the head of the headless ghost which is the main tale that Otto loves to tell so as the group is moving throughout the house we kind of hear some more backstory by the house um, by Otto and Otto reveals that the house was built by this uh, sea captain hundreds of years ago and he built it for his love and he went away for a while and when he came back and brought brought home some treasure or something his wife had left him for another man and he was left in the house all by himself and he kind of died of a broken heart and it's said that his his angered spirit has um, taken offense to people living in the house ever since his, he's died and there's a wall of paintings going up the stairwell as the group can see and you can see a, a painting at the bottom of this kid of Andrew who is this headless kid and these are apparently the victims of the ghost who is said to haunt the grounds and the, the group buys into it but the, obviously the kids have the, the Dwayne and Stephanie have come here so much that they don't really believe it or they heard it so much they're not really phased by it so when they make a break to um, when they head up to Andrew's room they break off from the group and they head down to a part of the house that's not on the tour and it says keep out it's private don't go in there but they enter anyway and they turn on a light and they start looking around the room and Stephanie gives Dwayne a couple of cheap scares and messes with them and makes fun of Dwayne for being such a you know <clears throat> kind of kind of a scaredy cat but at the same time you know Dwayne is more apprehensive than Stephanie is so Stephanie knows that she can push his buttons and, and not really upset him too much but the Dwayne overhears some footsteps and they both notice that somebody's coming to the room so they turn the light off and they go hide in the closet and while they're waiting they um, are then surprised when the closet door bursts open and it's Otto it was a pretty effective jump scare, if I have to say. That was pretty effective. It actually got me for a jump scare. That was pretty good. <laughs> so um, Otto, you know, pulls him out of the closet, ejects him from the house and says, don't ever come back. You are banned from here. Do not come back here. 
Stephanie's angered and throws a snowball out the door after Dwayne urges her not to do it. And then Dwayne's like, all right, let's move on from this. We don't need to come back here. Let's just cut our losses and do something else. And Stephanie's angered, of course. And that's when they're confronted by the boy from the bushes earlier, the pale boy. And the pale boy reveals himself to be Seth. He's this, he's this guy that knows apparently how to see the headless ghost. If you want to see the headless ghost, you can you can only see it after the place closes. So Stephanie buys into this and then looks to Dwayne to see if Dwayne's going to do it. And Dwayne reluctantly gives in and they agree to meet later that night after Otto's done with touring so they can go in through the basement and see what <clears throat> other parts of the house they aren't able to go to because of the tour. And they're going to try to look for Andrew's head doing that or find Andrew's ghost according to Seth. Seth knows how to find him. So that of course takes place and then they meet up later and it's revealed that Seth, they're already in the house and Seth uh, turns on this lantern, lights it up and they make their way to this room of the house they've never been into before and it seems to be a boy's room that they never heard of before and Seth explains this legend of this boy that came from around the 1920s and he loved strawberry ice cream and he stayed in this room and this room has a dumbwaiter door that leads up to another room up above but we'll get into that in a minute and he loved strawberry ice cream and he would order the servants who because he was very rich they had servants that lived in the house the servants will send up the ice cream through the dumbwaiter to his room and he and he would eat it all the time and one day the ice cream was ordered and it was on the way but it never really came and he opened the dumbwaiter door and he went down to reach it and he fell down the dumbwaiter shaft and when they found him his brain and his brain matter was the same color and consistency as the strawberry ice cream and they couldn't tell which was which <laughs> so that was pretty good pretty good effective scare there uh, very creepy to think about and um the kids seemed to be pretty scared you know pretty unsettled and seth's like all right, enough stories. Let's go up to this room. So they go up to this room they've never been before upstairs from, from the room they were currently in. And this room is kind of like an attic room, but it's the old captain's quarters. The captain is up there, uh, used to spend time up there. And Seth kind of makes a joke saying that this is where the captain haunts. And there's uh, canvas for painting and paint cans everywhere in the room along with old like fishing relics and stuff and Seth makes this joke saying that the captain loves to paint his victims that he turns into ghosts up here and when the the two kids enter the room Seth locks the door and they're like why are you locking the door and then Seth has something to reveal Seth reveals himself to be Andrew the headless ghost and the head he's wearing is in his head and the two seem pretty freaked out and he tells Dwayne he wants Dwayne's head, kind of like the book. So Seth then tries to get the head from Dwayne so he can put on his head. And Dwayne's like, you know, you don't want my head. I'm not good at math. You know, my hair doesn't go where it wants to go. And uh, <laughs> some pretty funny jokes there. But the, Stephanie and Dwayne manage to get away from Seth as Seth makes advances towards Dwayne. And they make they find that the dumbwaiters also were in the captain's um quarters and they open the dumbwaiter door to try to escape down it and that's where they find the, the ghostly head of the headless ghost andrew now i must say yeah the acting on this kid who plays andrew is terrible <laughs> he's a terrible actor but this head is like it's like what do you think you're gonna see ice cream like it, the kid's voice is nauseating and it's just really bad acted but the kids are flabbergasted. Hey, look, there's an actual head. This is Andrew's ghost. Here, you know, the head of Andrew's ghost. Here's your head, Andrew. They look over to Seth, and Seth doesn't say anything because a ghostly body has appeared out of thin air, and it's that it's the body of Andrew, the headless ghost. And the ghost the ghost body wanders to pick up the head, and yeah, it drops the head, and there's bad acting there too. And then once the head is picked up, the the ghost of Andrew walks off and Dwayne and Stephanie are like okay since that was the ghost of Andrew then you can't be Andrew and then all of a sudden Otto is in the room and Otto kind of reveals that yeah Seth was just playing a prank and kind of scolds Stephanie and uh, Seth at the same time 
for the pranks. And Dwayne is confused, but he's also like, okay, is it cool if we get out of here? And Otto's like, yeah, Dwayne, you can leave, but I want Stephanie to stay behind so I can have a word with her. And Stephanie looks at Dwayne and pretty much gives the nod and okay that, yeah, it's okay if you leave. But this is where the episode completely loses me. <laughs> this is where the episode loses me right here. So where the episode loses me is where after Dwayne leaves and hangs out on the staircase, hoping to hear that Stephanie, he didn't really want to leave, but he was waiting for Stephanie to be done talking with him. I was probably going to wait around for her. Stephanie then realizes big plot twist. Otto might be a mild, might be a, a big spoiler, but I feel like it's necessary to talk about here. Otto is revealed to be a ghost. Now, which ghost he is, I'm not going to really reveal. And then Seth is revealed to be a ghost. And then Andrew, the Ellis ghost, seems to be all involved in this. And there's a conspiracy to punish Stephanie for all the pranks and all the stuff she's done to Hill House for not respecting it. To paint her and turn her into a ghost. That literally is what they tried to pull off here. It's it's baffling. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so, Stephanie starts screaming as the painting is being, you know, conducted. And she's slowly turning invisible because she's turning into a spirit. Dwayne hears her screams and comes in. And they find something on the floor. And tries to disrupt the painting, which may or may not help Stephanie. And they may or may not escape. Okay. And then the true ending happens. It seems to be sometime later. There's boards on the windows of the house. Uh, there's a for sale sign out front. And the house is up for sale. And this couple's coming to tour the house. And there's a revelation that maybe things are going to go back to the way they used to be before the tour started happening at the house. It's kind of alluded to that. I'm not going to explain what exactly it is, but... Essentially, that's where the episode leaves, and that's essentially the Headless Ghost episode. Yeah, I don't really know what to make of this. I do have my positives and negatives with it. Um, I kind of want to get into my positives. Um, I think Heb did a, a decent job with the setting location. I think the uh, majority of the acting was really good. Like, Otto's actor and Seth's actor was really good. Um, I really dug Dwayne's acting. Um, what I recognize Dwayne from the most, I think Dwayne was in uh, the Santa Claus movie, the original one. He was one of the uh, the elf spy people that went to rescue Santa. I recognize him. And then Stephanie, I want to say she was in another episode. I think she might have been in like Bride of the Living Dummy or something. Yeah, she was an okay actor. There are some things I really enjoyed about the atmosphere. Given the budget, um, I think the Hill House looked really good for what it was. The house was pretty well done. The setting inside, it felt like a creepy haunted house. Um, the music score, I don't really bring up music score often, but the music score felt pretty eerie for this episode. Um, that kind of added to the experience a little bit. Um, the pacing wasn't the greatest, especially near the end, which I have like an appreciation and a, and a distaste for the, for the pacing. On one hand, I liked how... The story's just off the bat running, but at the same time, I don't like how rushed the, the reveal and the climax is at the same time. And we're kind of getting into bleeding into negatives here, but the pacing was decent. Dug it. Dug, I, I like that they kind of cut out some exposition, but at the same time, getting into the negatives, the exposition from the book really helped sell why Stephanie and Dwayne did what they did. I felt like if maybe the episode just jumped into that like like Dwayne is Dwayne and Stephanie are setting up this prank to, to prank the room and then it goes into the urban legend and they explain why they're the twin terrors are just bored or something I feel like that might have helped the the pace out a little bit might help the reasoning behind the characters a little bit um especially near the climax I feel like the climax was making up for lost time because the episode does spend a lot of time developing that build to the reveal that happens near the end with Otto and Seth and um, Andrew. But, yeah, the pacing felt okay at first. But then the issues came about by character motives. 
And then especially at the end where they're trying to make up for lost time. Pacing also was a, it's a, a mild detriment to the episode. And I feel like I have to bring that up. Um, the acting, specifically for Andrew, was terrible. <laughs> he was a terrible actor. Honestly, I'd be happy if I don't have to deal with him in another project I watched, especially from the 90s when he was probably a child actor. Hopefully the actor got better as he got older, but the acting for Andrew is absolutely awful. Um, and then there are some effects here. I feel like they kind of downgraded from previous ghostly effects. Like, Piano Lessons Can Be Murder happened in season one, right? Those ghostly effects were actually pretty good for what they were, for the budget. Going from that to this, I don't get it. <laughs> some of the ghostly effects here are very wonky. And, yeah, and with the effects and the choices come down to writing inconsistencies, which also plague this episode tremendously. If it's not the pacing, if it's not the bad acting from Andrew, and it's not the the poor effects of the ghost upsetting me, Dan Angel and Billy Brown's teleplay here not only fix some contextual problems, which I think we're going back to positives, the contextual problems with the ship captain. The contextual pro uh, problems I have with Otto, Seth. The obvious setups that were never really capitalized on in the book. They capitalized on in the episode. I like that they fixed those changes here. But what I don't like is the, the, the change of the plot to where it creates its own myriad of problems. <laughs> so, in the book, it's, it's more of the absolute ending. Really just sending this home but i would say this entire climax here is the most baffling thing i think the solution they came to fixing the plot of the book is baffling it doesn't fix anything it's actually even worse so the two kids seth who is the dumbwaiter kid he didn't die by getting painted right andrew had his head pulled off he didn't die by getting painted he got his head pulled off by the ghost so if the ship captain's painting is the response, like the, res, you know, the thing responsible for turning uh, the ghost of the house into being a part of the house. Then why is Stephanie, I mean, is she being erased from existence? Is she being turned into a ghost? That makes no sense. It makes no sense because the ghost here didn't die from painting. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's never really made to make sense. There's a lot of things to infer. There's like too many what's, how's, and why's <laughs> involved with this concept. It, it, it's, it's, it's a baffling choice. I think it's even more baffling than the, the ending of the book. I'm being honest. I think it's even more baffling. I, I really can't believe the direction they took here. Wow. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the ending, not to mention the very ending... Apparently there's a time jump, but it doesn't even try to explain that there's a time jump. I mean, it, it, it's that's part of the do with the pacing near the end and the climax and the very ending as well. But yeah, the ending in the climax in this is just a, a big question mark. Very questionable, baffling choice. So yeah, those negatives all piled on. Bad acting from Andrew, the... The baffling choice of the climax and the mechanism creating its own set of problems. Confusion. The rushed pace near the end. Um, yeah. And, and, the sh and some spotty effects. I deducted accumulatively off for this episode. 1.2 points off. There were about little to medium things I had an issue with. But they added up. And this episode lands at a 3.8 out of 5. It's an average episode, I would say. It's good. It's watchable. But it's also baffling at the same time. And, yeah, they had to, all they had to do is just fix the context issues with the ship captain and Otto and Seth, and they would have been good. But I, don't, I just don't see why they went that extra mile with this and just changed that much when it didn't need to be changed. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Headless Ghost ep episode. Let me know if you have watched this before. Do you love this or do you hate this? I'm dying to know, and I'll see you next time.